I nice to see you. I know. I'm sorry. So you're sick. I, I spent all day in bed. You sound awful. How do you work the phones when you sleep? Hi, I'm Demer. I, I, I went and worked out at 4 a.m. and I passed out my phone. Hello, Demer. Hello, Christopher. Nice to meet you. I have a surprise for you. You do? Yes. Well, it's this is check. surprise enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe that I attended your coming out party. Really? Yes. Well, Dash is too. That's what we were talking about. And he and said, and I should not just friends. there. We had it uh, together. We were the two debutants together. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I had two Coffee friends who, who were my dates that went to that And who party. were they? Um, Martha Muff. Mellon. Oh, oh sure, Muff. Of course, Muff. Muff. And Dixie Burden. I'll be darned. <laughs> so became a nun and then got <laughs> married. I got a nun. And sold the light. <laughs> sold the light, but don't kill Brenda. So I had 17 years. One's my daughter. And please my take one of these. Lovely. Oh, thank you. Oh, nice. And a great deal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's right. Hi there. Oh, great. Oh, my goodness. Yes, you are. Don't forget to sign the book. Mike, you're going to know. I love to take him. Oh, well. Yeah. You've done it. Ray, you survived oh, the trip. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see you. It's so nice you're here. Likewise. Yeah. yeah. I heard Demer was hopefully going to be here. Demer's here. Demer's here. Oh. Yeah, maybe she's the she has like a, a blue, light blue skirt. She just walked yeah. in the house. Hi there. Hi there. Are you well? I know, I know. I think last of us are in your uh, <laughs> And this is Aunt Demi, yeah, who's um, a dad. Hey, 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 I think that Richard would be very pleased that you were all here. Um, as you know, he, he, his biggest thing was old things. Um, he loved old buildings, he loved everything old he loved. And uh, my brother and I are experiencing that as we are going through his seven storage units. <laughs> Not to speak of his house, too. But that and his education, as you know, he went to about six different universities. And um, anyway, uh, I just want to give a little toast to him because he, you know, I get teary because he's our bear. Anyway, please lift your glass. Oh, 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 here. 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 And to Richard's second home. Yes. <laughs> well said. And, and his first choice in laundries. <laughs> That's so good. And, and also one more thing. Please don't go out to the icebox. Why? Because it'll be empty. <laughs> and only half refilled. <laughs> and you all know why. <laughs> Richard, to me, was like a big brother. He, he, he and Gail came down to Florida and saved me <coughs> out of a very bad situation. And because of him, we are living in Greenwich, and we have made the most wonderful friends here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Richard would like me to tell a story. Bob is sitting in the seat that he was, he was going to have, but that's okay, Bob, stay there. Don't talk to me. Yeah, yeah. Don't, tell don't me, pull a you tell them about the time that I almost became your stepfather. Oh, really? <laughs> Richard, Richard had 
an apartment in Boston. He had tried Harvard for the second time and decided that didn't work. And he kept the apartment, he stayed there, and we were living in the back bay. And my mother came to town, an original flapper from the 20s, <laughs> wearing a flowing gown and a broad, wide brimmed hat. And I've got a picture of her in the other room which I can circulate. You can just imagine this elegant woman coming to Boston and staying at the Ritz. And Gail decided to bring her over for lunch while Richard and I were renovating the apartment. Now by renovating, we had the, uh, the entire place torn apart, the windows out, and the mullions were being restored to an exact replica of what they were to begin with. And I mean, that was exact. We had to find a carpenter who had the knives. We went to New Hampshire, blah, 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 so forth. So Gail goes over to Buzzy's Roast Beef on Cambridge Street and buys roast beef sandwiches with Russian dressing. And she brings mother over to the apartment and sits mother on a keg of nails. <laughs> the mother's sitting there and Richard's paying absolutely no attention to her. None. He goes on working, hammering away, whatever. The place is a disaster. And my mother is absolutely fascinated because in her day, everybody was kowtowing to her, the doorman, the <laughs> restaurant waiters, and everybody. She wasn't used to somebody just going on about <laughs> their business, right? So anyway, eventually, she sat down, and we sat down, we had the sandwiches, and the only remark I remember from that luncheon was that she said to Richard, you must come down to Palm Beach and visit me sometime. <laughs> <laughs> so I, we, Richard deduced, and he used to tease me about this all the time, that, that actually I was, um, he was going to be my stepfather. He, he, he wanted to have that role. He wanted to be master of the universe and master of his own um, destiny. And so he wanted to, to rule. And he, had, he, had, he wanted to rule by a certain doctrine. And that, that was Richard being Richard. Okay, with that I'm going to turn the... <laughs> Over. I've said what I wanted to say. I'll keep it short. Who else is going to speak? Oh, Gail. Okay. Not Gail. Is Jim Whitaker here? Is Jim Whitaker here? Is Jim Whitaker back here? We're going to sing a song also. Oh. Okay. He's Jim Seated here. Jim's right here. Because I have a request of a story from Jim. Well, um, I'm not, I won't tell a great uh, bunch of stories, but um, about the uh, we're going to let you... Well, I, I identify yourself story. first to everybody and how oh, you... Oh, uh, Jim Whitker, St. George's, 52, um, Harvard, 56, so classmate. And by the way, this is Carl Grassoff, St. George's, 52. Oh, so we're, wow. we're kind of representing the last uh, of the Mohegans there. <laughs> and Jim came from Southampton today, and Carl came from Philadelphia. Wow. Uh, my daughter Polly uh, was in Berlin a few weeks ago, and she had stayed with Richard. She was Richard's uh, goddaughter, and she stayed at uh, the apartment several years ago. So she went back there, and she found these wonderful... These are Richard Holleran's student books from the days when he was studying at the university in... Berlin to be a Braumeister. Right. Wow. And, uh, wow. I don't know whether you guys know this, but he was the first American after the Second World War to be able to go to that university and actually become a diplomat German Braumeister. And if you if you look at these, I don't know who's eventually going to own these, but whoever wants, uh, they're really amazing. In typical German fashion, they go into every last detail of every class and course, and the professors, and, and this is the date, and that's the thing, and, and signatures, you know, typically German, even with little pictures of Richard in here, that uh, it would take a panzer division to, to separate this from the book, the way the, the Germans do it. But uh, uh, I think everybody would love to look through these, because yeah, they're wonderful, and the, the pictures are remarkable, because... In 62, here's this brash young man. Is that Richard? That's Richard, oh looking like That's he just devil. did when what he first graduated oh, from, from, uh, Saint, from St. George's and from college here. 
And then look at this. This is the young man about town uh, in 1968 when he oh got another gosh, degree there. Look at that. Oh and I have made some blow ups of these, of, of this, and I wanted to give one to Gail, and one to Glenna, and one to Cousin Mike here, <laughs> who has done such a wonderful job. So um, let's see, maybe we. Probably want to, uh, I'll just show you this. Just a minute, I'm going to speak next. Uh, here's, 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 the, uh, here's the brash uh, man about town in Berlin, 1968. Oh, wow. Thank you. Handsome guy. Like a movie star. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah I mean, he looks like so if, if, yeah. if, if Hollywood had found out about him, oh, yeah. Look at Dashing young, young man. Yeah. Mike Dolly. Was he a big singer at Harvard? Uh, because he was, I know he sang, I think, with the German group here. Uh, he, he may have done that. I, I, he certainly wasn't at Harvard or St. George's. Mike, that's for you. Thank you. Wow. And uh, Gail? That's what the women all Gail? That's wonderful. Oh, that's a beautiful. It does look like a movie star. Yeah. Jim Taylor. Jim Taylor. I was like, I don't know. 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 So, the last thing I would just say about uh, Richard, uh, there, there's, thousands, there's thousands of stories about Richard, and uh, people have been telling them for years, so I won't uh, bore you with any of those. But, but, uh, but the club in New York, Jim, where he rests, is willing to go to jail with you. It's the most amazing thing. Uh, yeah. Well, I was just going to say uh, that. Uh, uh, one one thing about Richard uh, that I learned over the years uh, was his incredible lo loyalty. Uh, I was once uh, at a dinner party at a Greek restaurant in New York, and uh, they brought the bill to us, it, and they, they, they put on a $50 charge for what they call corkage because I brought a bottle of wine into the restaurant. So I said, uh-uh, no, not going to pay that. And the Greek uh, uh, restaurant owner said, then I'm going to call the police. <laughs> and, and, he, and he did. And I said, I'm oh, no. going to stand on principle. I'll go to jail, etc., etc." So the cops came, and they sat me down. And we had about eight of us together. And the cop said, he said, look, fella, you look like you might be from the Upper East Side, maybe. <laughs> he said, this is Hell's Kitchen. And the jail that you're going to have to spend tonight, <laughs> Sunday, Sunday night, you won't see a judge till Monday morning. And he said, uh, let's see, we've got two car thieves, an attempted rapist, and a couple of other very unpleasant people you're going to be spending the rest of the weekend with. And the food isn't good, and the rats are about uh, three feet long. And there's, oh, and by the way, there's no heat. This is the middle of the winter. So I'm starting to think, well, maybe principal isn't that. And, and, and every one of my friends kind of peeled out and said, Jim, just remembered something I've got to do. Even my then girlfriend said, are you crazy? I'm, I'm out of here. So at the end of the evening, the cop, the restaurant owner, me, and I look up, and there's Richard. And Richard looks at me and says, come on, I'm ready to go. Let's go to jail. Oh. <laughs> I said, I said, you're standing on principle, and I'm with you. And I said, Richard, you really want to do this? You want to go down with the car thieves and the rodents until Monday morning? He said, sure, you're my friend. I'll, I'm, I'm with you. You want to stand on principle? Let's do it. At that point, I gave up on my own principle. The only one who was still willing to go and, and be arrested was, was Richard. And I finally, I said, no, I'm going to pay the bill. We'll get a lawyer, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll work it out. He would have gone. He would have had it. That's what he was like. He could be difficult. He could be critical if he didn't agree with you. But if you were his friend, he would stand by you through hell and high water all the time. On top of that, you know, these books demonstrate the, his extraordinary ability in the, the worlds of languages. I and mean, he, he mastered not only German, but uh, technical German so that he could go to this university and learn uh, Braumeistership. Uh, this is an absolutely amazing, amazing stuff. He was a, he was a, he was a scholar. He, he learned Norwegian. He learned a little Polish. Gail's got a few things for you. Yeah, well, anyway, I'll, I'll shut up. But he, was, he, was, he was a remarkable and, and, and wonderful, wonderful guy. So I'll be looking closer to you guys to look at it. Love it. Yeah. If, you have, if you have that, Carl sings it.
weddings all over the country. Oh, no, this is that same. No, this, no. Is, this is just me. This is something I wrote about Richards. Quite a Richard Holleran was a polymath with a brain almost as crowded as his backyard, <laughs> which, which, which contained several sets of triplet cars as well as an unrelated assortment of plumbing fixtures. <laughs> but back to his brain. He, 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 could, he could patiently explain to you the difference between two-row and six-row barley for beer brewing, and which was superior. He, he could recite rapid-fire the Kings of England from Ethelred, the Presidents of the United States, and the Vice Presidents, both forward and backward. <laughs> and I believe he was working on the Secretaries of State. Okay. Wow. Wow. <laughs> he, he knew every architectural term and regularly complained that the columns on the bank of Havermeyer were incorrect because they lacked emphasis. I think of it every time I see it. Uh -huh. he, he, he told me many times how chamfering was incorporated into his design for his porch, but I'm afraid I still, still don't get it. <laughs> he, could, he, he, he could tell the story of Snow White in Norwegian. <laughs> but, but, but his real forte was German. While staying in Mexico for dental work, that's another story. <laughs> Richard, Richard and I met and dined with a German college professor and his wife. Afterward, the wife told me in amazement that Herr Holleran spoke perfect university-level German, unlike any other American she had ever met. Wow. Richard, Richard served as an interpreter for the U.S. State Department for a number of years, leading groups of German officials across the U.S. The, the, the good part, he told me, was that he got to go to Hawaii three times. <laughs> he whispered to the leader, tell them you want to go to Hawaii. <laughs> oh, this, this is all on us taxpayers, anyway. <laughs> but, but, but the bad part <clears throat> was that he had to see a chorus line 15 times. <laughs> he, he had physical and, and practical talents as well. He was the only person I ever knew who could fold king-size sheets to meticulous perfection by himself sitting down. Oh. <laughs> it was the wing spread. <laughs> there you go. Um, this, the, the, this was after drying his laundry on the bushes in Maine or anywhere else he found himself. <laughs> and also, also standing on the main shore, he could turn a black umbrella into a signaling device to alert people on the island to come to get us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Force code. Oh, you thought of that. <laughs> um, he, he bestowed titles on us, beginning with himself. He, Here it he, comes. <clears throat> he, he was Lord Lackluster. <laughs> Christopher was Lord Plushbottom, <laughs> Lady making, Plush Bottom. making me Lady Plushbottom, a designation I treasure almost as much as his description of me, me born in the Midwest, educated in the, in the East, as grass-fed, corn-finished. That's the best <laughs> beef. <laughs> In his last year, he decided to change his title to Lord Rothernut, or Rothernut, which I interpret as a reluctance to leave us, as in, I'd rather not go. But sadly, he did leave us. So we must say goodbye to our dear friend, Richard, Earl of Everything. Bravo! There's a song. You want to sing a song? Yes. yes. Okay. Get the song. Get the song. <laughs> <laughs> and Carl, you come. And Carl. You're the singer. Sure, I'd be happy to help out. I hope I know the song. Everybody knows. Oh, we're gonna practice. We're gonna practice. Not the words. Glenn, are you can sing. We can share. He's not going to sing. Who is that? Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. I sing so well, Chris. Yes. It's very easy. I'm just going to sing the refrain. I don't have my glasses. This isn't, this isn't a song. No, it's not a song. 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 Richard's his name. Holler and holler and Richard's his name.
expert at growing and painting and strewing. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Lieberhauer enriches his name. This old rich is lucky, our riches so plucky. I just after years of admiring from a distance, I just pulled in and Richard came out of the kitchen said, oh, well, let me show you. you. You must be my carpenter. And I walked through the house and then there's Billy. And I said, Billy, what the hell are you doing here? He goes, oh, I'm building this porch. And Billy hired me to help out on the crew to finish the porch. But anybody that knows Richard is, uh, Richard, every territory was his territory. And as you're building, it didn't matter about safety or progress or, or code or anything. If you wanted to put something there, it damn well went there. And we're building this porch and we're worried about safety and getting floors down and putting beams up and rigging. And, and Richard would just at night, we, he would come and put junk on the porch, his old bicycles or caskets. Yeah. And one day I simply was carrying tools or something to open the doors to the porch from the house and literally hit hit my face there was a bicycle right there and I just went bang down almost broke my ankle and my head and I just got so angry I just what the hell and I turned around I grabbed his bicycle and I threw it off the porch. successful after spending a horrible amount of money on lawyers and they always took pleasure in the fact that they built a new building in Victoria's Secret. <laughs> If it's any if it's any consolation, it went bankrupt. Yeah, if it's any consolation to Richard, I walked by there today and and it's closed. Right. It, yes, yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. It's sustained its business. Actually, Victoria's Secret was the uh, was where the nuns used to live at St. Mary's. And of course, Saks Fifth Avenue was Woolworths. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, he used to giggle about the fact that the priest could come down the street and turn the corner <laughs> and sneak a peek. <laughs> he used to tell me that all the time. But anyway, I, I just want to say that Craig and Bill have been absolutely stellar in their work uh, since uh, Richard died. They, have, uh, they are beyond anything I've ever known in my life, these guys. They're terrific. I just wanted to... And I second that. Yeah. And we're still at it. We're not done. We're not done. We're brilliant. Yep. This gentleman here wants to say he's been trying to say something. Uh, I was associated with Richard Holloran in politics. Uh, louder, for, louder, please. I was associated with Richard Holloran in politics for many years. But I'd just like to dwell on one little episode. And that has to do with Hamilton Avenue School, which is not very far from here. Really, because Richard wanted to save Hamilton Avenue School is the reason why there isn't a hole in the facade of Hamilton Avenue School along Hamilton Avenue today. It's quite a story. It was his 70th birthday in, I believe, 2005. Then he calls me up and says, will you come down to Hamilton Avenue School with me? I says, what for? I, he says, well, we need to save Hamilton Avenue School from being uh, demolished. I said uh, to Richard that uh, progress has been made, so to speak, uh, by uh, the town administration in making plans for change. We're, we're quite late, but since it's your 70th birthday, I will deny you nothing, and we will go down there. And I could introduce myself as Dr. Carlson, so it was easier uh, to talk to the principal.
<coughs> and Oh my god, how we could have used this stool.
these shelves are two boxes thick.